day five started just like the four other days before it. Beautiful sunshine. But we were expecting a change later on the day. So we set our sights on covering about 30 k's in order what? to get into oh, yeah. the Great Ravine proper. We continued to be challenged by the many logs in the river, which we noticed which were ever increasing. That plus all the other rocks that we kept on bumping and stopping on impeded our progress somewhat. Logs are a real danger for rafters, and when you didn't get stuck on them, you had to make sure that you avoided them at all costs so you don't get stuck between a log and a raft. It was Nick's turn to capsize today. The rapid itself was harmless enough. As usual there were more tributaries to explore, this time it was Canyon Creek. Given the beautiful day we enjoyed many beautiful, perfect reflections interspersed with a new normal amount of rapids. We continued to be amazed by the force of the water and nature, how they could sculpture these rocks. I termed them rock galleries. Absolutely amazing. Another bend in the river revealed yet another tributary, which we had fun exploring. We had seen Blush Rock Falls marked on the map, but we weren't expecting quite such a high set of falls. We explored the two or three tiers of waterfall. Another inconspicuous rapid and Another capsized poor, poor old Nick. I don't know, try and get it up for it. <laughs> Sorry. We reached Inception Ridge, the pool before the first of the four big rapids in the Great Ravine, the Churn. While we thought we were ready for the physical challenge, it was still hard work and hard going and it was a lot longer than we thought it would take. However, we still made it to the Coruscades campsite by about 4.30 that day.
More down. It was raining consistently by the time we reached Livingston Cut. On the map it was inconspicuous enough, but we weren't ready for such a grand and deep little gorge. We expect to do the low portage on the Thunderbush given the low river levels. It was the second of three big portages for the day and it did not let us down in terms of how much work and effort we had to undertake in order to get past the slippery, slimy and uneven rock size of the rocks. Gonna be more suited to this coming down. See how easy that was. Yeah, give me the paddles. Yep. Oh, backwards. Huh? I think I might have pierced something then. Yeah, potentially too rough across there. Direction and put one, two. I'll pump up right up and um, then we can try and get more of these air pockets out, maybe. Oh, look at that. Deep in the thought. Get your paddle. Hold well on. Didn't we want to go towards the right? No, we're not going in there. Too tight. Can't go there. Gotta go there. You're coming across here, aren't you? Give me a paddle, get that out of the way. Yeah, let me, I'll put the boat down. You get out then. I'm thinking just below there, maybe we can get in. Hey? Of what? That one! Right? Yep. Here's your paddle back. Here goes nothing!
final big rapid in the Great Ravine, the Cauldron, was easy to bypass. In fact, it was so easy we didn't even notice it once people were actually past it.